Hello students. Welcome back to the online sessions of the material science and metallurgy. Myself Vivek Parik taking the lectures on your chapter that is known as in powder metallurgy and the subject known as in material science and metallurgy. Today we will be starting with our next topic that is known as in powder metallurgy. Now let us begin the thing that is what do you mean by the powder metallurgy. Basically it is the art and science of producing the metal powders and the finished products from it by using that particular powder in its pure or the alloyed form with or without the inclusions of the non-metal. That means what we are going to do? We are taking the metal, converting that metal into the powder form and then we are using that powder to make a particularly final product. Now which powder we will be using? We can use the pure or the alloy powder and with that we can go for the inclusions of the non-metals that is in our hand. Whether we want to add or we cannot want to add then it is up to us. So this is how the powder metallurgy works. That means taking a metal, converting it to the metal, converting that metal into powder and from that powder we are making the final product. So that method is known as a powder metallurgy. Basically it is the oldest form of the metallurgy and has begun as an art. So now we will see that which are the different evidences through which we can say that this particular method is an older form of the thing. So let us go for the next topic that is the history of the powder metallurgy. Now before 3000 BC the Egyptian used to make the metal products with the help of this metallurgical that is the powder metallurgy. So this is the basic instinct where we can say that it is one of the oldest form of the metallurgy. Then there is also one of the thing that is in 1829 the ductile platinum was also made with the help of the particular powder metallurgy. Then comes the tungsten wire were also used by this method. After that the Germans used to make the different types of the material for the war. In the world war 1 they were used by the help of the powder metallurgy. So this is the basic thing where this powder metallurgy come into the existence. That means commercially if you go then in 1945 the whole powder metallurgy came into the thing and we can say that it has came in such a way that now a commercial products were used and the manufacturing began at a very rapid rate. There are certain examples you might be knowing about the sword of the Tipu Sultan that is also one of the example of the powder metallurgy. So the researches have also confirmed that it was made from the powder metallurgy then the shields and the cannonballs which were used during the wars between the two kings and all the shields and the cannonballs were also made from the powder metallurgy. So these are all the evidences from which we can say that it is not one of the modern technology. Yes, there are the different machines which we are using for the powder metallurgy nowadays. But we can say that it has been using, the people are using this particular technology since the many ancient ages. Clear. So this was the history which suggests that, that this method is a one of the ancient method which is still in the practice. Now where we can see or now let us discuss about the flow sheets of the powder metallurgy. Now what the flow sheet of the powder metallurgy looks like. So here it is the thing. What does the first thing we want to take? We will be doing the metals powder. Whatever the alloy if you are taking an alloy then you should be taking more than one of the metal and then converting both the metal powder separately. And then with that we will be using additives that is which are the additives lubricants binders and all we are using. Now both the things we will be adding together and we will be going for the mixing and blending. So the metal metal powder will never stick with each other for sticking purpose what we require we require the additives. So what we are doing we are adding the additives and the different lubricants and all so what will happen they will mix with each other and as a result the metal powder will come closer to each other. So that is the mixing and blending after mixing what we are doing we are going for the dye compaction. We are going for the dye compaction that means we are giving the certain shape to the material. Whatever the final shape we require we will be giving that particular final shape to the material. So we will by pressing the material we will give the final shape of the material that powder is brought into the final shape. 
after that sintering is done what do you mean by the sintering sintering is the thing in which we will be using the sintering that means we are providing the heat treatment to the material that means we are heating the material so what will happen the properties like strength and all will increase in this particular thing after that that is an optional secondary manufacturing or you can say finishing secondary finishing this both the steps are optional if you want you can go as your material is final product you will be getting so these are the basic flow sheet how you will be going or how we will be following for any of the powder metallurgical product we will be going or we will be following this type of the flow sheet for the powder metallurgy so now where we are using this particular powder metallurgical product so let us see that thing that is the tungsten as i told you the tungsten rays that is the filament of the tungsten in the electric bulb or the radio valves x-ray tube all that things whatever the filament of tungsten we are using that filament of tungsten is always manufactured with the help of this powder metallurgy then the gears and all the complex shape of the gears they are very much accurately made with the help of this powder metallurgy then going for the different types of the automobile parts such as the electrical contact crankshaft piston rings brackets brake linings all that thing connecting rock shaft all that thing they can also be manufactured with the help of this powder metallurgy then the different types of the thing that is the things which we are using it for the wire drawing and all deep drawing that means the metal shaping whatever the materials we are using to for the shaping of the material that particular all the things they are also made from the powder metallurgy then we can say the rocket parts missile missile parts and all that things are also made up from the powder metallurgy grinding wheel whatever they are used for the grinding machining part clock timing device all they are also one of the applications of the powder metallurgy then the different types of the furnaces also uses the powder metallurgy lock whatever the locks magnets all that things they are also made up from the powder metallurgy that means this powder metallurgy has a very vast very uh, very vast applications of the thing that means it is used in many different fields for the many different plant clear so for that particular thing we are using this powder metallurgy now let us define the steps of the powder metallurgy the very first step we discussed that was the very first one we will be going that is powder production after that we will be following the powder conditioning the powder conditioning means the mixing and the blending of the material the third comes the powder compression fourth comes the sintering that is the heating of the material fifth comes the finishing operation that are the optional this fifth step that is known as an optional step and the last one we will be going for the testing of the material so basically the powder metallurgy has been divided into six steps out of the six steps the first four steps they are the most important and the most widely used step without the first four step you cannot manufacture any of the powder metallurgical product clear so now after that thing let us see the flow sheet that is this is the particular thing additives and the powder which whatever the material we want that final product that thing we are using it over here then what we are doing we are going for the mixing part after mixing you can see this machine it will be going for the compression part so it will compress the material this is the furnace of the sintering which the heating of the material will be taking place and after that these are all the secondary operations which we can use and after this operation you can see our final product of a gear here we are manufacturing with the help of this particular thing so this is the basic flow sheet of the powder metallurgy and the route we are following for the applications or the manufacturing of the powder metallurgy okay so now let us start with the very first step we will be discussing in this whole unit that the different types of the steps how we are creating and how we are going for each and every step so before going to that the very first step we require that is known as a powder production method so the very first thing that the very first step that is powder production method so these are all the different methods all these methods we will be going in a detail in our lecture so powder production basically they are divided into four one the first one mechanical processes these are the majorly used technique second one physical processes third one that is the chemical processes and the fourth one that is known as an electrochemical processes according to the processes first the primary classification has been done that is mechanical physical chemical and electrochemical 
Out of the mechanical processes, there are many different six methods machining, crushing, milling, shooting, graining, atomization and all these things we will be discussing. So, in today's lecture, we will discuss this mechanical processes in a detail. Clear? So, let us start the different types of the mechanical processes in the detailed version. So, starting with the first one that is the mechanical powder production methods, the very first method which will be coming that is the most simple method known as a machining method. What is this machining method? Machining method is the method in which we are going for the machining of the parts. During the machining, what will happen? The small types of the chips they are formed. Whatever the chips that are getting, the chips we are taking and grinding on the chips, what will happen? You will get the powder. So let us see. See, this is the thing. This is milling. This method, whatever the figure is shown, that is known as a milling operation. During the milling, what is happened? This type of the milling cutter is moved on the surface of the material. During the movement, what will happen? It will grind the material. During the grinding, what will happen? You can see there is a small types of the chips which are produced. These chips we are taking, they are in a very small form and these chips after grinding or take a particular hammer, hit it. So, what will you will get? You will get the small particles of the powder. That means the metal we are getting that is in the powder form. So, let us see. As the name suggests, method employs use of machine tools to produce powder. The, here I have shown you the thing that is milling, you can go for the drilling, lathe, all that machining operation, whatever the metal is removed that we can use and that material by hitting it, we can get the powder of the material. The chip obtained are hammered and made in the form of the powder. So, this was your very first method which is known as a machining of the material. Okay, by machining method, what we are doing? We are producing the powder. Second method that is the crushing, the simple method, crushing, crushing means to crush the material, to crush the material, how we will crush between the two solid part, we are allowing the material to go and that metal between the two things that is the jaw crusher, if one is movable and the second one is stationary, what will happen, this movable will hit the material and according to it what will happen, the crushing or crushing effect takes place, so here is the thing you can see, these rollers will move. This roller will move and this big particles comes in the small particles. So, powder will be getting. Here also you can see jaw crusher. One is stationary. This is stationary part. This is movable. This will move in this way. What will happen during the movement? There is a crushing effect which can be found out from this material. And as a result, the small powders will be coming out from the bottom of the thing. So, let us see this method. In this method, the small pieces of material are collected and crushed together. What we are getting? We are getting the small pieces of the material. They are crushed and what we are getting? We are getting the metal powder at the end. The method employs by using the stems, hammer, jaw crusher, gyratory crusher. So, this, are the, this is the gyratory crusher. Here you can say jaw crusher or the gyratory by the help of the rotary things we can go. So, crushing means basically we are reducing the size of the metal and as a result we are taking so much less amount of size that it looks like the powder of the material. So, this is our second mechanical powder production method that is known as a crushing method. Now comes the third method that is known as a milling method. Now, what do you mean by the word milling? Milling that is a thing in which there is a one cylindrical drum is taken. In that cylindrical drum, what we are taking? We are taking either rod or we are taking balls. Here you can see the balls are taken. With that balls, what we are using? We are taking the metal whose powder we want. After keeping all that thing, this particular mill is rotated. So, what will happen during the rotation, the balls from here will fall down and due to the ball falling down on the metal pieces, it will get heated up. So, what will happen? Due to this thing, the crushing effect takes place. So, this drum is allowed to continuously roll for a very long time and due to that thing, what will happen? The material will go up and will fall down, go up and fall down and during that thing, the balls will hit the material and during the heating, what will happen? Crushing effect takes place and as a result, this thing happens. So, this is the cylindrical mill. The balls are taken, metal pieces are taken and as a result, this allowed to move for a very long time and due to that thing, after a long time, what we will get? We will get a metal which is in a solid form and that will be converted into the powder form. 
it use of the rotating ball mill machine the raw materials they are filled with the balls or the rods and then the mill is allowed to rotate so that the balls or rod hits raw material and crushing it and slowly time comes when raw material is converted into the powder so this was your third method that is known as an milling method now comes the fourth one which is known as an shooting method what is this shooting method there is a rotary thing here you can see there is a rotary table which is moving and on that table what we are taking we are allowing a liquid metal to fall on this thing we are allowing the liquid metal to fall on this thing what will happen when a liquid metal is falling on the rotary thing the splashes will get away in all the direction and when this splashes comes down and settle during that during in the air what happens the solidification takes place so that liquid droplet will convert into your metal powder droplet that means a droplet is converted into a powder form so here due to the help of this rotary motion what we are doing we are making a liquid stream into splashes and that splashes are allowed it to cool and during that cooling what will happen the liquid is converted into the solid in this method the material is brought to its hot boiling state and then poured on a vibrating screen in the control condition the liquid droplets are allowed to solidified in the atmosphere then that process is known as an shooting next method graining the method is the whole thing that is the same the whole concept is same the only one change what we are taking we are taking it that is the change which we can see that is in this graining method we are cooling it with the help of the water we are cooling in the form of the water or the thing liquid droplets are allowed to solidified with the liquid like water that means the only change that is during this thing whatever the splashes they are falling with the help of the water they are allowed it to cool and as a result of which what will happen you will get the powder of the material clear and the last mechanical method that is known as an atomization now let us see what do you mean by the atomization the metal is made into the liquid form you can see the liquid form is taken in the top of the thing tank after that it is allowed to slowly get down from that nozzle and it will come down whenever it is coming down this liquid stream is allowed to cool with the help of the water jet or the liquid or you can say the compressed gas so what will happen during the free fall that material will get cooled so this liquid droplets you can see over here will cool and will get a powder at the bottom of the material and this method is most widely used nowadays because it is very rapid method and all the material can be easily done powder with the help of this atomization method let us discuss the thing the metal is first melted and taken in the furnace and then passed through a nozzle at a predetermined dimension high pressure gases as i told you enters the nozzle causes disintegration of the stream so that means what will happen due to the high force of the liquid or the gas the liquid metal will get disturbed and will go at an even rate with the close control over the metal what will happen it will allow to cool and as a result powder of iron copper aluminum can be obtained or generated with the help of this method let us see one of the one more figure you can see the ladle we are taking over here ladle from that we are going for the metal container over here you can see from that from the nozzle it will come down what is the role of this water nozzle it will from the stream from this stream what will happen this stream will be done into the small droplet and these droplets while coming down or while falling down they get solidified and we can see that is the small drop a uh, small powder particles we are getting it as a result of this clear so this was all about the mechanical powder production method and next method of the different powder production we will be discussing in our next lecture so in today's lecture what we have discussed we have discussed the what do you mean by powder metallurgy steps of the powder metallurgy and then we have gone for the powder production method that is the very first step and in that we have discussed all the methods of the mechanical powder production method clear so this is it and in the next lecture we will discuss the remaining methods of the powder production clear till then thank you